presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Van Johnson and Esther Williams in Easy to Wed with Virginia Gray. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The real test of any star's popularity is at the box office. And tonight, we present two artists who have that box office magic, both as individuals and as a team. They're Van Johnson and Esther Williams. And they star in the metro golden Mare screen success, Easy to Win. Just what makes a popular romantic team is inexplicable. But I think one reason why these stars rate so high with you is because they're so typically American. Van Johnson, with his ingratiating smile, might be the boy next door. And Esther Williams, who literally swam her way into our hearts, proves that an outdoor girl can also be glamorous and feminine. Tonight, they play their original roles in Easy to Wed, a blithe and lively comedy about a newspaper reporter and a lady who makes news. You know, American girls are famous for that easy-to-wed look, and Lux Toilet Soap helps them look that way. Their beauty is natural, but even natural beauty needs protection and the complexion care like Lux Soap. Now, here's the first act of Easy to Wed, starring Van Johnson as Bill Chandler and Esther Williams as Connie, with Virginia Gray as Gladys. It's early evening. In the cocktail lounge of a fashionable hotel, two old acquaintances have a sudden meeting. Bill! Bill Chandler! Well, you don't seem very happy to see me. I'm delighted. From Brooklyn to Bombay, a stab in the back spells haggerty. But I've been looking all over for you. Oh, now, Bill, why don't we just... Bury uh... the hatchet? Yeah, yeah, sure. Fine. Where would you like it? No, no. Come on. Come on. Let bygones be bygones. Huh, pal? That's okay with me. Goodbye. And give my love to Farwood. You still are working for him, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm managing editor now, that's all. You know, someday he'll smarten up and give you a job to the janitor. Listen, Chandler, another crack like that and I will personally... Sue me for libel? Oh, by the way, how's the paper doing these days? Libel suit? Us? Forget it. And if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. What work? I'm back in my old racket, Haggerty. I'm through with headlines and the rats that write them. So long, No, 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 wait a minute. You're too intelligent just to be a hooper with a dance band. You're a newspaper man and a very good one. You mean you want to give him a job back? Let me hear the presses roar again. Same salary, same desk, everything like you had before. Only something new has been added. A hot libel suit by a dame named Connie Allenbury. Who told you that? I saw the story. We killed the story. Yeah, after the first edition, but that's the edition I happen to read. Only a dope like you would have touched a story like that. What's she suing for? Two million bucks. Who does she think she is? Just Connie Allenbury. Yeah, I know all about her. Spoiled, arrogant, engaged to a different guy every month. The crown princess of cafe society. That's her reputation. And she thinks it's worth two million? Well, when I get through with this... Great, we... great. You're back on sound. Well, not quite so fast. During the short time I was with the paper, I squared more than a million and a half dollars worth of libel suits. And what did I get? A hundred and twenty-five bucks a week. Yeah, but now, look, Bill, Sit I down. Will... Now, first of all, I seem to possess a peculiar talent for settling libel suits, right? When they concern dames, yes. And right now, you've got a beaut. I just happen to have the clipping with me. Yeah. Hmm. Constance Allenbury, socialite daughter of financial tycoon J.B. Allenbury, named husband stealer by irate senora in hair pulling match at Mexican garden party. So we made a little mistake. Miss Allenbury wasn't even there. Now look, I- I'll talk to Farwood. I'll get you a raise. I'll give you my word. That's I'll give just you just what I had in mind. A little raise. You know, to tell you the truth, Haggerty, I've been expecting to hear from you all week. Okay, okay. What do you got there? A contract, five thousand dollars down, fifty thousand when the suits dropped. Fifty thousand bucks? Are you nuts? Okay, okay, let's forget it. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's 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 just be reasonable. Huh? On second thought, I don't think I want the job at any price. I'm all set with the dance band for six months, a lot of dough, all expenses you paid. You ought to be arrested for extortion. Give me that paper. It's up to you, pal. Fifty thousand is a lot less than two million. Yeah, she collect too. 
she'd run that alleged newspaper right out of business. Okay, now it's signed. Now, before we get to the... Uh, you Bill Chandler? Oh, yes, Mr. Bartlett. Won't you sit down? No, I've just got a second. The boys tell me you're looking for a job with my band. I wish I could help you out, Chandler, but we're all filled up. Oh, uh, thanks all the same, Mr. Bartlett, but I've just signed with Mr. Haggerty here. Good. Glad you got a break. <laughs> Why, you dirty, no good, double cross. Take it easy, Haggerty. Well, telling me that you were all Nobody set... Nobody twisted your arm. Besides, you'll get your money's worth. Now, the Allen Burries are in Mexico City. I grab a plane, register at the same hotel, and meet the little lady. Perhaps she comes to my room. Huh? But just for a cocktail, oh. of course. All perfectly innocent, except to our private detective who wires my wife. You got a wife now? No, but we'll hire some attractive girl to marry me. When the right time comes, she stages a pretty scene and sues Connie for alienation of affections. Sensational. Let Connie go to court with a libel suit after that and see what she collects. Yeah, but we got to get a girl for you to marry. Yeah, somebody we can trust. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What? I got the girl. Who? Mine. My girl. We're supposed to get married on Monday. Okay, so we postponed it for a little while. Well, where did you find this, uh, this lady? At the Club Continental. She's quitting tomorrow. She's a singer, see, and, and she dances. You were going to marry her on Monday? You think she'll go for this deal? Why, the girl is crazy about me. All I have to do is ask. Naturally, she'll go for it. You heard me, Warren. The answer's no. But, but, Gladys. You, you listen to me, Warren Haggerty. This is the end. Marry me off to another guy. To this... Blonde baboon. Baboons are very smart, Gladys. Look, it's just for a month, Gladys. Maybe only 30 days. Well, that's just 30 days too long. If you don't want to marry me, just say so. Well, of course I want to marry you. But this comes first. The paper will go bankrupt. No other town and paper will give me a job as an office boy, will they, Bill? Not if they know you like I do. Oh, you guys are breaking my heart. Now, honey, honey, look. Would I permit you to help me like this if I didn't consider you practically my wife? Huh? Would you ask your wife to hook up with that ape? An ape can do anything a baboon can do. Ooh. And let's leave personalities out of the show. We... And it won't be a real marriage. All you have to do is go to adjust the piece and say a quick I do. What do you mean it won't be a real marriage? If I say I do, he says I do, the judge says you bet you do, we're married. <laughs> Yeah, but I know a justice who will play along with it. You go through the ceremony, see? Only he forgets to sign the marriage certificate. It's a phony. Then Chandler goes his way, you go your way, I go your way, and everything clicks. You gotta do this for me, Gladys. You gotta. Oh, brother, the things I do for that newspaper. Okay. Oh, now you're talking, honey. Let's go. Uh, yes, let's. <laughs> I now pronounce you man and wife. Well, Mr. Chandler, aren't you going to kiss the bride? Oh, of course. And may uh, I kiss the bride? Why not? Everybody else is. <laughs> well, Warren, aren't you going to kiss the bride? I'd like to see anybody stop me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a friend of the family. Mm -hmm. Oh. A very old friend of the family. I uh, hate to disturb this friendly gesture, but uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 I have okay. to catch a plane to Mexico, remember? Well, spending your honeymoon in Mexico, eh? Just me. She's been there before. <laughs> oh. Well, here's your marriage certificate. Thank you. How much do I owe you? Oh, anything you think it's worth. Here's a dollar and a half. <laughs> well, Gladdy, maybe you'll want to save the certificate for your hope chest. Hey, wait a minute. It's signed. Why, of course, Mr. Chandler. He signed it. He did? Well, what do you know? Then I'm married. Why, you double cross. Uh-uh, no. Gladys. No, 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 no. So it was Haggerty's idea, huh? Well, when I want a photographer, I can hire one in Mexico. But he tells me to come down to the plane and bring my camera. Okay, now just do me a favor, Spike. When we get there, keep your eyes open, your mouth shut, and your camera focused. You, uh, got any ideas yet? Naturally. I know just how to meet Miss Allendura. She likes to swim. So when we get to the hotel, we head for the pool, understand? Well, I ain't exactly stupid, Mr. Chandler. She doesn't like to have her picture taken, so you take a picture. She puts up an argument. I come along. I smash your camera. You get tough. I hang one on your chops, and before you know it, Connie Allenberry and her old man are showering me with gratitude. See how easy it can be? Uh, now, listen I, carefully. I'll give it to you once more. Hey, Miss Allenberry. Hey. Yes? That 
that's it, Miss Allenberry. Thanks a lot. Just a minute. I, I'm sorry, but I did not want my picture taken. Well, that's too bad, good. But I already took it. Give me that film. Not a chance. So you're the girl that's going to sue the star for two million smackaroos, eh? Uh, how about a statement to go with the picture? Certainly not, and I demand Look, why don't you, you, give you just that... dive into the pool, honey, and cool off? You heard <laughs> the lady. Now, you keep out of this, mister. She doesn't want her picture taken, right? Get your big mitts off my camera before I... Before you what? Oh! Maybe that'll teach you a lesson. I'll get you for this, William Chandler. I don't think you'll have any more trouble with him, miss. Connie, are you all right? Certainly, Father. Just a little argument with the photographer. Oh. That uh, young man who helped you, who is he? I don't know. Uh, uh, Boswell? Uh, Yes, Mr. Alamere. Uh, Make a note of that name. William Chandler, he said. Yes, sir. William Chandler, sir. Very kind of you to join me for a cocktail, Mr. Chandler. Not at all, sir. It's very nice of you to ask me. Well, I, uh, I wanted to thank you for your kindness this morning. That photographer? Oh, he was probably from some scandal sheet. You know, I detest that sort of thing, Mr. Allenbury. You too, eh? Why, last year I sent one of them to a hospital. My, my publishers never did quite forgive me. Publishers? Yes, I'm a, I'm a writer. Right now I'm doing some hunting yarns. Hunting, eh? Yeah. Well, now that's very interesting. You know, uh... I'm quite a duck hunter. You are? Hello, yes. Dad. Oh, well, Connie. Uh, what happened to those women from Los Angeles? Oh, I ran out on them. I simply can't be bothered with people you meet in hotels. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chalmers, my dear, who saved your life. How do you do? Oh, yes. Sir Galahad, thank you so much. Well, you don't have to worry about that picture. The camera was ruined. Personally, I'd like to ruin the photographer. Uh, Mr. Chalmers is... Uh, uh... Chandler. <laughs> Chandler. Oh, yes. Chandler, yes. Uh, Mr. Chandler's a writer, my dear. How amusing. What do you write, Mr. Rose? Oh, I've done a few And models. are you enjoying Mexico? Well, I've always... Oh, uh, incidentally, what... Father, did you wire for my horse? No, Connie, I did not. Uh, you can buy a horse here. Father, I want my own. Uh... <laughs> Do you ride, Mr. Chalmers? Chandler. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I've ridden the Kentucky Derby a couple of times. <laughs> huh. uh, but hunting is really my sport. Big game, moose, ducks, anything on the wing. Pardon me, Miss Allenberry. Yes, Boswell? Uh, those ladies from Los Angeles, Oh, miss. it's all right, Boswell. I shook them off. I'm afraid not, Miss. I overheard them in the lobby. They're planning to join you in the dining room. Oh, no. I hope you don't think I'm presumptuous, but if you'd like to avoid company, any more company, that is. Yes, young man. Well, it would be a pleasure to have you at my table. Well, it seems we're about to be indebted to you once again, Mr. Chandler. Uh, Chalmers. Oh, uh, Chandler. <laughs> Shall we dine, Miss Allenbury? You're in luck, Father. Look at the menu. Wild duck. Ah, wonderful. Uh, do you care for duck, Mr. Chandler? Do I care for duck? The one thing in the world I do care for is duck in any shape or form, but especially on the wing. You're really a duck hunter? Oh, am I? Why, when I don't have to work, I spend practically all of my time duck, uh, duck hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks have their points, all right, but give me a Canadian hunker. Why, up in my hunting lodge in Canada, I... The waiter is waiting, Father. Hmm? Oh, oh, oh. Shall we say duck? Duck, duck. Duck. Thank you, senorita. Duck. Ah, what a sport. The whir of wings in the cold gray light of dawn. <laughs> I tell you, there's no thrill in the world like it. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> there's one that beats it. When you take aim and fire and the feathers fly and your bird comes fluttering down to the water. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. <laughs> Why, I remember once up there in Canada, I was using a small Ford pen. Yes, sir, I've hunted up the world over. But say what you will, in Canada they come... Father, dear, for two hours we've had nothing but dust. Oh, nonsense, I'm just warming up. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Allenbury. Would, would you care to dance? Thank you, I believe I would. You're very much at home on a dance floor, aren't you, Mr. Chandler? Well, when I have a partner like you, yes. <laughs> You're as light as thistle down. Hmm. Deceiving things, thistle. They're really quite prickly. You know, I can hardly concentrate. Must be your eyes. Oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Your eyes remind oh, yes, me... Yes, yes, I know. Sparkling diamonds. Deep sapphire. Oh, no, no. On the, on the contrary. They remind me of marbles. Marbles? Yes. A couple of Aggies I won as a boy. <laughs> Crystal clear and cold as ice. Really? I presume you're an authority on eyes, Mr. Chandler. Oh, no, not eyes. Marbles. 
I was champion of my neighborhood for years. How quaint. You know, I believe you've made quite an impression on my father. Oh? He's convinced you're a great duck hunter. Well, maybe I am. I think you're a great hunter, too, Mr. Chandler. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Let's just drop it, shall we? And if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to the table. Hello? You're a long-distance call, senor. Oh. New York is on the telephone. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hello? Well? Hiya, Haggerty. You didn't call me up to say hiya, Haggerty. <laughs> what about Connie Allenberry? Were you with her again today? Uh, well, uh, no, no. I, I had it all fixed up for her to have cocktails here in my room tonight, but she, she didn't show up. She had a headache. She sent some friends instead. Stop being funny. How's my wife? Glad he won't talk to me. Still sore. And if you don't get... I know just what I'm doing now. Now, just wait till tomorrow. I'll be sending for Gladdy any minute now. Just hurry up, Curly. That's all I got to say. <sighs> yes, sir. Just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Well, good morning, Miss Allenberry. How's your headache? Oh, hello there. It, it left me just as suddenly as it came on. Oh. And uh, how was your little cocktail party last night? Oh, very enjoyable. I'm glad now that you didn't come. Oh, I hope you didn't mind my friends dropping by. They seem so anxious to meet you. That lovely Mrs. Burns Norville and her charming daughter. Yes, they were so far superior to most people one meets in a hotel. Well, I, I, I thought you'd get along with them. Babs is one girl in a million. And so rich, too. Or didn't you know? Oh, yes, yes. Her mother told me. She told me several interesting things. Hmm? I had no idea you were so fragile. Fragile? Me? Yes. You damaged so easily. Oh, it fascinates me. Sues for two million dollars. Just think of it. That libel suit of yours gives me a new light on you. Just who, I said, is this wonder girl? Joan of Arc, Florence Nightingale, Madame Curie? What has she done to get such a reputation? Discover penicillin? Aren't you being a little absurd? Aren't you? Just a moment. You don't understand. Oh, no, I... no, no. Don't tell me. Let me guess. And do be careful. You might injure yourself. You should be kept under glass, Miss Allenberry. It's... That was a nice right cross. It was even more than that. It was probably the first sincere gesture you ever made. Good morning, Miss Allenbury. <laughs> Tell her off, she slaps my face, I get on a plane, and here I am, Haggerty. Oh, yeah. Just dandy. Five days in Mexico, and she slaps your face. So the Wonder Boy lays a big fat egg, huh? Haggerty, will you kindly hush my wife? Nobody's hushing me. I have my ticket to Reno, and my hotel reservations, and my lawyer, and... and... no grounds. Anyway, Papa Allenbury's asked me up to his lodge in Canada for a weekend of duck hunting. Oh, swell. What do I do? Bust in on you and the old man? Uh... Connie will be there, all right. That was no farewell slap. So when do you go? Tomorrow. Good. Now, Gladdy, you'll be there the next night. Oh, I can see it all now. Alone in the mountains, just you and Connie and the ducks. Midnight. Gladdy appears. The trusting bride that you deserted. Crushed. Stricken. I bust up the joint, huh? Uh, with a detective and a photographer. The case is in the bag, Bill. Congratulations. I always knew you'd deliver. You know what? I think I'll wear pink. There's only one hitch. Hitch? I look terrific in pink. Duck hunting. The tales I've told Allenberry about my duck hunting would curl what's left of your hair. But I've never even held a gun in my hands. Just talk your way out of it, genius. We'll be up there Saturday. We're busting in on you and Connie Allenberry at midnight. And it better be worth the trip. In a few moments, we'll return with Act Two of Easy to Win. Act Two of Easy to Wed, starring Van Johnson as Bill and Esther Williams as Connie, with Virginia Gray as Gladys. For 24 hours, Bill Chandler has been reading up on duck hunting. But now it's the dawn of a new day. And at the edge of a duck marsh, Connie and her father are waiting for the mighty hunter to show up. I told you he wouldn't show up, Father. Ten minutes late already. Oh, nonsense. I woke him up myself. Well, I'll bet you 50 shares of tell and tell he can't hit the side of a barn. Why, he's the best in four men on duck hunting I've ever met. Oh, Father, darling, for an inveterate chairman of the board, you're very naive. Why, he's the most impossible, self-centered, conceited oh, man I've well, ever... then why did you come up here? You had a weekend all planned at home, didn't you? 
Well, I, I had to protect my favorite father. Oh. And, and besides... Oh, there, I... there you see. There he is now. Uh, over here, Chandler. Oh, no, no. Will you look at the equipment he's got? Good morning. Oh. Good morning. <laughs> Isn't this the life, eh? Oh, nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, uh, catching cold, Mr. Terry? Oh, no, no. Just a frog in my throat. We're old friends. <laughs> uh, say, my, but you are loaded down, aren't you? Just my usual equipment, Miss Ellenbury. Well, let, let's get started, shall we? Oh, by all means. If you don't mind, I'd like to try my luck alone. Alone? Uh, suppose I just wander up there, Mr. Allenbury, where the ripples are swifter and the reeds are thicker? Uh, <laughs> wise man. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines, too. Oh, uh, here, in case you get hungry, a thermos of coffee, sandwiches. Well, thank Thanks, but I've got a snack right here in this hamper. What? You do come prepared, don't you? Isn't that an extremely large hamper, Mr. Chandler? I have an extremely large appetite, Miss Allenbury. Oh, I see. Well, uh, you didn't bring along a dog, did you? Uh, uh, here, fetch it. Here, boy. Fetch it. Uh, you shoot it, he'll fetch it. He's the best retriever in Canada. Shake hands with the man, fetch it. Nice doggy. Nice boy. Hey, look. Take it easy, will you? Oh, I'm afraid he's taking a dislike to you. He's really quite human, you know. Oh, well, I I guess I can do my own retrieving. I really look quite attractive with a duck in between my teeth. Fetch it smells something in your hamper, Mr. Chandler. Yes, he seems to, doesn't he? Go on, Fetch it. Go with him. Go, go with him. Well? Well, what? What do you mean, well, what? New clothes, new gun, new decoys, new everything. He's after something, Father dear, but it's not ducks. Oh, for heaven's sake, Connie. Now, come on, let's settle down and do some hunting. Well, Dad, now do you believe me? He hasn't fired a shot. Well, an experienced hunter like Chandler doesn't shoot at just any bird. Uh, oh, there he goes again, a duck horn. Isn't that awful? Mm, terrible. Yeah, but by golly, it works. You, you saw that last flight. I still say he would have fired if he knew how. My dear child, the man's a sportsman. He wanted to give, give us first call. Oh, hey, hey, Dad. Here they come. Look, look, here they come again. By George. The finest flight of honkers I've seen in years. Now, watch yourself, Connie. Be ready for him, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. Cut it out, will you, Fetch? I'm just doing what the book says. Now, get a load of this one. The mating call of a red-headed, pin-tailed widgeon. Say, <laughs> when you look at the birds. Oh, relax, Fetch. You don't think I'd shoot one of those things, do you? I've got my bird right here. See? Here in the hamper. That puts you back in town. Said it's the biggest honker he's sold in 20 years. Now, if you'll just step aside, I'll fire off this field piece and we'll be all set. Ah, that ought to convince him. Incidentally, doggy, it's a very good thing you can't talk. Huh? Oh, this is fine. This is just dandy. You know it's 11 o'clock. Take it easy, will you, Gladdy? Hunting Lodge of Allenberries can't be much farther. Nothing but wood. Why, it's so dark out there, you couldn't even find You always head. said you wanted me to take you riding in the woods. Sure, but not with a detective and a photographer in the back seat. Yeah, well, all right, just concentrate on what you're going to tell that Allenberry, Dan. Okay. Connie Allenberry, you have taken from me the one thing in the world that I love my husband. Pretty good, huh? Well, I don't see Ethel Barrymore having a nervous breakdown. Oh, <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about me, brother. What about lover boy? What if she's still flat in his face? Bill, don't be silly. He's got 50,000 bucks riding on his romance. Now, come on. Try it again. All right. Connie Allenberry, you have taken from me the one thing in the world that I love, my husband. I may only be a poor defendant. Well, I don't know about you two, but I'm just about ready to fold up. Ah. Uh, what a wonderful day it's been. Oh, come on. Have some more coffee, Dad. No, oh, not at this hour. You know, Bill, I'll say it again. That was the finest hunker that ever led a V formation across my marshes. And you bagged him. <laughs> Clean as a whistle. Oh, it was really nothing, Mr. Allenbury. Nothing at all. Marvelous shot. Marvelous. <laughs> well, see you both in the morning. Night. Good night, Good night Mr. Dad. Allenbury. You're tired, too, aren't you? Oh, me? No. <laughs> Why? You've been looking at your watch all evening. Have I? Mm-hmm. Well... 
Since you're not tired, we've got work to do. What? See this bag? Yeah. Aggies. Aggies? You mean marbles? Sure. Crystal clear and cool as ice. Remember? Oh, Connie. <laughs> Mr. Chandler, prepare to defend your title. You mean you shoot marbles, too? I'm a very remarkable girl. I'm beginning to think you're right. There are many sides to my nature, young man. Depths you little dream of. I'll make a study. Do. Well, here we go. How's my grip? Mm, not bad. Not bad for an amateur. Wait a minute. Move your thumb a fraction to the right. right, right. There. Now what? Now you get a bead on your Aggie. You get a bead on your Aggie. All right. Tighten up on the thumb. T- tighten up on the thumb. Okay. Now let her fly. Ah. Okay, ready? I think I'll take that little green one on the end. <laughs> not bad. Sure. Okay, now now here goes the blue one. Uh, this will require a slight curve and a decided stitch. Now, 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 you just watch. Ah, do you give up? Oh, terrific. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. You're a funny kid. Very different from the girl in Mexico. Hmm. I feel different. You know, Bill, it's this place. It's all tied up with my childhood. We've had some heavenly times here. Every minute completely filled, like today. It's been pretty perfect, hasn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. And it's costing me a fortune, young man. Oh, what do you mean? I bet my father that you'd tip your hand the first 24 hours. Tip my hand? Yes, you see, at first I... Well, I I thought you were just another fortune hunter, chasing $50 million on the hoof. I see. Well, I I know it sounds silly, Bill, but... Well, I I thought you had something up your sleeve, an oil well, an invention, or... Well, the last one had an emerald mine. Oh, Connie, Would you believe it? I even bet you couldn't hunt. I'm glad I lost, Bill. Don't apologize for suspecting people, Connie. Ring every coin you meet. There are lots of wooden nickels in circulation. You better go to bed. No, no, I want to talk. You see, Bill, you're you're the first person in years that... You're in for it, my lad. What? The story of my life. Oh, Connie. Come on, now listen. <laughs> you got to hear about the kitten that died when I was six, and my great aunt Matilda, who married at eighty-two and uh, divorced at eighty-three. Really? And and all those twisted newspaper stories about my romances and why they were not romances, Bill. There aren't going to be any more twisted stories, Connie. Connie, I was. What is I it, was... Bill? Oh, nothing. Holy mackerel, it's 12 o'clock. Well, what happens at 12 o'clock? That, my dear, I hope you will never know. Good night, honey. But, dear, what? Well, there's somebody in the road. I just saw somebody. It's him. It's Chandler. Look. He's waving at us. What's the idea? You're supposed to be making love. Not so loud. Not so loud. Connie's gone. Well, what are you doing? Chasing her? I had to stop you before you got there. It seems... You mean she... I'm not going to get to bust up the joint? She she left this afternoon. She's back in New York. Who are you trying to kid, Chandler? How come you didn't phone us? Because I didn't have a nickel for the phone booth and the duck blind. Now, you better get out of here before somebody sees you. Fine, Romeo. One look at you and the dame takes a powder. I'm sorry, Haggerty. Yeah, 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 now, look, yeah. I'll fly out of here in the morning. Suppose we meet in my apartment late tomorrow afternoon. Okay with you, Gladdy? Why? To plan my next move, that's why. Connie Allenbury's going home to Long Island. I may have to work fast. Okay, your apartment. Five o'clock. I know, I know. Why didn't you tell Haggerty the truth? Why did you tell him that Connie's gone? Why don't you mind your own business? Who do you think you're kidding? You've fallen in love, sucker. <laughs> With Connie Allenberry. <laughs> And I say we got all the evidence we need. The setup is perfect. The setup's crazy. I haven't got a chance. Look, the Allenberry dame was in the woods with you, wasn't we she? We weren't in the woods. We were in the lodge. You told your trusting wife here that you were going away on business, uh, but you lied. You went to the Allenberry lodge to keep a rendezvous with Connie. Our private detective will swear that he, that he followed you there. Yeah, but her father was there, too. You're way off your rocker, Haggerty. You came home with circles down to here. Oh. You're, you're called to the little woman. You criticize her biscuits. You, you, you strike her. She strikes you back. You strike her back. 
Oh, it's in the bag. As neat a case of alienation of factions I've ever seen. They'd throw you out of every court in the country. Now, look, I'm just beginning to get a real in with the family. Give me time, and I'll have an open and shut case. Bill, we've got a perfect case, and we file suit tomorrow. We'll make the noon edition of the paper. How big will my picture be? Oh, as big as Connie. Well, it better be. Haggerty, please, give me just one week. I guarantee you... No, 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 not a chance. She's walked out on you twice. You know, Chandler, I'm beginning to think you're losing your grip. Well, so long, Gladdy. I've got to get back to the office. Well, uh, I better get going, too. You know, Gladdy, I, I can understand him tossing me to the dogs for the newspaper. But when he does it to the woman he loves... Who's tossing who to what dog? Uh, don't you see? We haven't got enough evidence to convince a jury of low-grade morons. If he springs this, the Allenberries are bound to smell a frame-up. You think so? And to think that Haggerty would do this to you. The girl he pretends to love. Oh, think of the publicity. I am. That's why I went for this deal in the first place. You see, Warren said it'd do a lot for my career. He did, did he? Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you something. Would Bernhardt do it? Would Cornell, Hayes, Fontaine do it? Well, no. Uh, But I'm not in the class yet with those dames. My dear girl, why, you have everything. Fire, beauty, temperament. Haggerty doesn't even know the real you. I do. He stifles you. He holds you down. Yeah. Yeah, who does he think he is? Why, you could soar to the heights. But Haggerty won't let you. The big heel. Oh, my heart bleeds when I think of a girl with your talent hoofing in a nightclub. Why, you could do great things. Shakespeare, Moliere, Ibsen. <sighs> That's it, Ibsen. I can see you now in a doll's house. Are you kidding? I'm five foot seven. <laughs> and Shakespeare. Hamlet. Ah, Hamlet. That reminds me. Are you hungry? Uh Uh-uh. Just thirsty. Oh, forgive me for not thinking of it before. Room service, please. Oh, what an Ophelia you'd make. Flowers wreathing your shining hair and a a crazy smile on your face. Room service? This is Mr. Chandler. We'd like a drink, please. Send up a magnum of champagne. Oh, no, no, no. Don't get a magnum. Get a whole quart. Right away, please. Thank you. Tell me more about Shakespeare, Bill. Oh, and pour me another glass of bubbly, huh? Come, my fair Ophelia. Let us down the sweet craft of Bacchus. Who's that? Just Shakespeare for bottoms up. Ah. Uh, you know what? What? You're cute. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Remember Warren Haggerty. Who? Oh, him. Yeah. Well, uh, a girl can certainly hug her own husband. And you are my husband, aren't you? And after all, these are our last moments together. What do you mean? Well, if you file suit tomorrow, I'll have to go away to prove we're alienated. Oh, I'm going to miss you, Gladdy. You don't want me to start suit tomorrow, do you? For your sake, no. No, I don't. Well, then, I won't. Now... How about Hamlet giving Ophelia a nice big kiss? Hmm? <laughs> I couldn't do that. Why not? <laughs> well, it's, it's just not in the play. <laughs> oh, no wonder Ophelia went nuts. <laughs> what did he do? Well, let me show you. Oh, oh, I feel funny. <laughs> I feel awful funny. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Now, Hamlet stood like this. Mm. He placed a candle at her feet. Uh, Yeah. And another at her head. I look terrific in candlelight. And then he crossed her arms like this. Like this. And folding his tent like the Arabs, he silently stole away. So long, Ophelia. (laughs) Gee, that's the nicest brush off I ever got. I'm delighted to see you, Bill. Now, now tell Boswell to get some trunks and come on in for a swim. Thanks, Connie, but I never dunk this time of year. But the water's warm. Ah, uh, that's because you're in it. <laughs> that's all very nice, young man, but you're not fooling me. What's wrong, Bill? Well, I, I said I'd never mention it again, Connie, but... Oh, the libel suit. But what on earth has that got to do with us? Plenty. Connie, for your own sake, you've got to drop it. Aren't you taking this much too seriously, Bill? After all, it's my fight. Well, that, that makes it mine, too, doesn't it? You you really care that much? Connie, if I had two million dollars, I'd give it to settle this thing right now. You're sweet. 
Look at you. You've got water dripping down your face. Give me a... Bill, the towel's over here. Oh, is it? <laughs> but I'm getting you all wet, darling. I... Oh, just wring me out, baby, and hang me up to dry. Oh. You don't seem to realize what this means to me, Haggerty. I own this newspaper. If Connie Allenbury takes the case to court, I lose everything. And what have you done? I had it all fixed, Mr. Farwood. Alienation of affections. Only glad he backed out. But what's Chandler been doing all this time? This this miracle worker you sold me. I don't even know where he is. He's, he's disappeared. Well, find out. Do something. You bet I'll do something. Mr. Farwood, I'm going to go out to Long Island and see Connie Allenbury myself. <laughs> You're, you're right, Miss Allen Barry. It was my fault. I had no right to run that item. Well, it's nice of you to admit it, Mr. Haggerty. For the rest of my life, I'll be, I'll be haunted by the knowledge that I've wrecked five hundred lives. Those poor people who, who work on the paper, think what it'll do to them. No money, no jobs, and all because I. Mr. Haggerty, you're right. They shouldn't have to pay for your mistake. Oh, I knew you'd feel this way, Miss Allen Barry. Thank you, Miss Allen. I'll see to it personally that every cent I collect from the libel suit goes into a trust fund for them. You mean you're not dropping the case? Why, of course not. I have a cause now to help those people. But the paper, it'll go under. It'll fold. Yes. Yes, I, I suppose it will. But as you say, the main consideration is to get money for those poor, unemployed people. Where are you, darling? Oh, here I am, dear. Oh, but what are you doing? The... Oh, uh, this is Mr. Haggerty from the Morning Star. Mr. Haggerty, Mr. Chandler. Uh, not, uh, not William Chandler, the writer. Yes, Bill does hunting books. That must take you to so many interesting places, Mr. Chandler. Oh, it's, it's all in a day's work, Mr. Haggerty. <laughs> uh, wonder if you might consider doing something for our paper. Oh? <laughs> of course, it would, uh, be a great departure from what you're doing now. Oh, I'm sorry, but I seem to have my hands full. Yes, yes, haven't you? And after all, I came here to discuss the case, but uh, now there's nothing more to discuss, is there? There certainly isn't. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Allenberry? And you can tell Mr. Farwood that we're not entertaining any representatives of his yellow paper in this house. Well, I'll make a point to tell him, Mr. Allenberry. Goodbye, Mr. Chandler. Quite a surprise having seen you here. <laughs> again, Warren. Maybe I didn't hear right. You heard me, Gladys. Chandler's out there now at her house. He's been seeing her every day. Why, he told me he hadn't seen her since Canada, the big two-timer. Look, don't you see? He's been protecting her. He's in love with the dame. That's why he's been stalling and disappearing and lying to you. Now, if I were you, Gladys, I'd get out to Long Island right now. Here. Here's the address. With her, huh? With Connie Allenberry, huh? Oh, you just wait till I see him. I'll tear the roof off the place. Uh Oh, that's my baby. And don't forget, phone me the details the minute you're finished. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting. The curtain rises on Act Three of Easy to Win, starring Van Johnson as Bill and Esther Williams as Connie with Virginia Gray as Gladys. Well, it's a little later, dinner hour at the Allenbury Mansion. But Bill Chandler's appetite has suddenly deserted him. A sense of impending disaster tells him he'd better get out and fast. And, Dad, you should have seen Mr. Haggerty's face when I told him about the trust fund. Oh, it was really wonderful. <laughs> Just don't allow him in here again, my All dear. Right. Hey, don't you think I'm right, Bill? What? Bill, you're miles away. Oh, I will be. I was, I was just thinking this time tomorrow I'll be dining at the Sky Room at the airport. Why? Oh, just dinner with my publisher. He's flying to the coast on the 13th. But today's the 13th. Oh, no. Tomorrow's the 13th, sir. Friday the 13th. Bill, today is Friday. What? Well, of course it is. Oh, this is terrible. He's got a contract waiting for me. I've got to see him. Oh, what time does his plane leave? 9.30. Well, then you can still make it. Come on, I'll drive you, Bill. Oh, no, no, no. Finish your dinner. I insist. I- I've got my own car outside. Good night. Well, strange. Yes, isn't it? Hello? So you finally got home. Oh, hello, Gladdy. Don't you hello, Gladdy, me. 
They having dinner with your publisher, huh? Oh, you've been handing me a line of floaty chatter all week long. And all the time you've been romancing that Long Island Lornette raiser. Oh, Gladdy, you... I happen to have a piece of paper that says you're my husband. And I'm telling that to Connie Allenberry. Tonight. No, no, that, that doesn't sound like my Ophelia. Ophelia, my foot. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't blame you for being upset, Gladdy, but it hurts me to know that you don't trust your Hamlet. Now, now, look, honey. I want you to slip into your new green dress. You're terrific in green. I'll pick you up in 20 minutes. We're going dancing. And when I have you in my arms, holding you close, I'll explain everything. Well, all right. But nothing you say can stop me from seeing that Allenberry Dane tonight. Oh, brother. How's this for a headline, Spike? Harris accused as husband stealer. Connie Allenberry sued for alienation of affections by Mrs. William Chandler. Well, we'll fill in the gory details when we hear from Gladys. Yeah, but I, uh, I wonder what's keeping her. Well, the longer we wait, the better the story. You know, I'll bet the old man's trying to bribe her. Yep, yep. Rich father Hello, tries to... Hello, Warren, honey. Gladys, where have you been? Dancing. Yeah, but, but uh, what about the Allenberries? Mm, well, uh, Bill and I talked it over and decided against it. Easy, Haggerty, easy, easy. Kill the story, Spike! Go on, go on, kill it! And keep your voice down. Bill and I aren't used to shouting. Haggerty, what would you say if I were to tell you that I've practically gotten Connie Allenberry ready to drop the libel suit? I'd say that you were a no-good double-crossing liar, and I'd be right. Tom William, I refuse to listen to you being insulted. Not four hours ago, I heard your two-timing Romeo drooling sweet nothing into Connie's diamond-studded ear. How do you like that? Bill told me all about it. That's merely his technique. Now, the Allenberries are giving a big party tomorrow night. I'll be there. You go right ahead, darling. I trust you. I'll get her to drop the case once and for all, providing you don't decide to barge in again. Yeah. Why can't you be more subtle like Bill? Yeah, but how do I know you can get Connie to drop the case? You'll just have to take my word for it. That's good enough for me, Lammy. Well, maybe it is the best way I'm... Sorry I blew up. Oh, I think nothing of it. Uh, now, shake hands. Uh, I want my two boys to be friends. That's it. Come on, William. Good night, Warren. Oh, I don't get it, boss. I just don't get it at all. That two-timing, conniving rat. Making Gladdy believe he's in love with her. Well, Willie, Willie, we won't get away with it. How are you going to stop him? I'm going to wash up that Allenberry case once and for all and channel along with it. Now, first of all, Spike, we're running a phony item in the society column. What do you mean, phony? Well, I mean the item will appear in only one copy of tomorrow's newspaper, and that one copy is going to Gladdy, and you are going to deliver it in person. But, but what are you going to say? Uh, stand by, brother. Just stand by. Yep, that's right, Gladdy. Warren tells me to take it here to you in person. See, here it is right here on the society page. Give me that. A little birdie tells us that the charity fiesta at the Allenberry estate tonight will mark the engagement of Miss Constance Allenberry to Mr. William Chandler. Happy couple expect to marry within the month and honeymoon of Mexico City. The romantic spot of her first meeting. I don't know why Warren told me to bring that you, but... That does it. This is the end. Let me out of here. Hello, boss. Boss, this is Spike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Gladys went for it all right. Boy, did she blow her top. Where is she? She's on the road, boss, going to Long Island. My dear young lady, there are 200 guests out there, and I... Well, just what do you want? I told you what I want. I want my husband, Bill Chandler. But uh, there must be some mistake. I'm his wife, and I can prove it. Please, please. If what you say is true, you'll have every opportunity to prove it. Oh, trying to bribe me, huh? Now, if you'll just sit down, I'll return your husband to you as quickly as I can find him. But, but what is it, Dad? I don't understand. Just tell me one thing, honey. Are you in love with Bill Chandler? Oh, yes, Dad, terribly. I never dreamed I could care so much for anyone. But what's wrong? I'm afraid he's married. I don't believe that. Well, I don't want to believe it either, Connie. But there's a girl in the house who says she's his wife. Now, where's Bill? No, no, just a minute, Dad. Let me find him. It's, it's my problem. Well, let, you'd let better me hurry, my dear. I, I, I don't know how long I can keep that girl alive. What is it, Connie? What are you trying to tell me? Bill, I, oh, I, I don't know where to begin. I, I've got to ask you a question. The most important question I'll ever ask you. Go ahead. Bill, ha have you had many proposals? 
proposal? <laughs> well, that depends. Marriage proposal. Oh, not enough to turn my head. I'm asking you to marry me, Bill. Is that the question? Yes. Oh, but Connie... You... Yes or no, Bill? Oh, will I? Now? Not now, darling? Now? You mean soon? I mean now, tonight. Is there a preacher in the house? <laughs> no, no, not here, darling. We'll take the car and disappear. Oh, Bill, I, I thought I'd lost you. You can never lose me, didn't you know Well, my hunch was right, Spike. I knew he'd bring her back here to the hotel. Now, you're you're sure they got married? Oh, boy, sure, I'm sure. I followed the car. They went to a justice of the peace and got hitched. When's Grady coming? What did she say? Oh, she's on her way here now. When I told her what happened, she said she'd tear that hussy's blonde hair out by a dark root. <laughs> hey, hey, there she is now. Well, boy? Oh, we got him cold, Spike. We, you, you just wait here. Why, Gladys, this is a surprise. Oh, I'll just bet it is. I'm sorry to bust up your honeymoon, Miss Allenberry, but this man happens to be my husband. This is the little lady I was telling you about, Connie. Miss Gladys... Miss wa- nothing. Mrs. William Chandler's the name. Get it? I've looked forward to meeting you. Bill's told me so much about you. He told you about... Oh, no, you don't. Come back here. Well, I just don't want Warren Haggerty to miss anything. Come on in, Haggerty. Did you hear everything, or shall we start all over again? Why, well, Mr. Haggerty, how nice to see you. Uh, well, Gladys... You uh... keep out of this. Now, as Mrs. William Chandler, I... I beg your pardon. This is Mrs. Chandler. Yes, we were just married. <laughs> oh, that's just what I'm talking about. Why, well, that's arson. <laughs> no, we are married. <laughs> I'll show you the certificate. What a story. Constance Allen Berry marries Bigaman. You print that, and you'll have another libel suit in your hands. You married me, didn't you? That one doesn't count. Doesn't count? Doesn't count. There's a certain Mr. Joseph Simpson, your lawfully wedded husband. Don't hand me that. I've been divorced from Joe Simpson for... You obtained your divorce in Yucatan by mail. All Yucatan divorces were ruled illegal three years ago. I looked it up in the Hall of Records yesterday. I also consulted my lawyer. Too bad, Haggerty. Gladys and I were never really married. Oh, oh, Bill, Bill, don't forget the letter. Oh, yes, the letter. The letter, Mr. Haggerty, here from Mrs. Chandler. What letter? Read it. She was so touched by your plea for those 500 starving employees. You, you dropped the suit. Connie, Miss Allenberry, I mean Mrs. Chandler. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. I can't thank you. Allenberry, heiress Mary's miracle man. What a yarn. What a scoop. What a day. Uh, Mr. Haggerty, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, yes, 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 my hat. No, your hat and Mrs. Simpson. Oh, Mrs. Simpson. Oh, that's glad, gladdy, gladdy. You know, gladdy, that, that Mrs. Simpson really kills me. I got a dash, baby. Call me at the office. Wait a minute. Hey. If you want a real scoop, I'll give you one. I learned that my Yucatan divorce was no good, so I got a second divorce from Joe Simpson and Reno. You what? Go look that up in your hall of records. Now, where do we stand? Let's sit. Oh, Phil, this is awful. Oh, you were all terribly smart, weren't you? All working for the happy ending. Haggerty wins his case, Chandler wins his girl. Where do I come in? Oh, you had a lot of fun making me fall for you, didn't you, Bill? Okay, so I fell. Oh, you're a pretty poor excuse for a husband. Nobody else is going to get you, not if it kills us both. Now, Gladdy, just... As for you, you're ten times worse than he is. You double-crossed me for the sake of a a newspaper. Gladys, no. Now, wait a minute. I'm leaving, and don't try to stop me. No, you can't walk out on me now. Oh, be still, be still. Let me handle this. You two diplomats have done enough. This way, Gladys. We'll talk this over alone. Hey. What's the idea of locking the door? I want to make sure you'll listen to me. If you dare offer me money, so help I me wouldn't up. think of it. Well, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> you? I have a pretty fair notion of what you've gone through. Oh, I'll just bet. Please, let me finish, Gladys. Any woman can be starved by neglect. Th- those little attentions Bill paid you probably seem so much greater because you weren't getting any at all from Haggerty. Why... Well, I bet he he never noticed the clothes you wore and how lovely you look, the way Bill did. You don't really want Bill. Oh, I I know, I know. You've got him now. But it won't work, Gladys. Marriage isn't built on spite. It's built on love. It's too important. Look, I've been pushed around all my life, see? From now on, I do the pushing. Yeah, and I do the talking, too. So just sit down and get another air for it. Bill... What are they talking about in there? How do I know? Now, look, you, so you settled the libel suit. That's okay, but you're not going to deny you tried to make love to Gladys. No, I'm not. 
You're not? It's all in a day's work. Well, what do you think we're going to pay you $50,000 for, to make love to my girl? If the necessity arose, yes. But I assure you, I wasn't putting forth my best efforts. Oh, I suppose Gladdy isn't good enough for you. I didn't say that. Insult Gladdy, will you? Well, you've had this coming for a very long time. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it. Don't you see, Gladys? You adore Warren Haggerty. It's written all over you. Everything you've done and said proves it. I don't love Warren Haggerty, and I always will. I mean, I hate him. I don't ever want to see him again. What's that? What? It, it sounds like they're fighting. Fighting? Well, open the door. Warren! Warren! Bill Chandler, if you heard him, I'll... Oh, where's the key? Open the door! Wait a minute, sucker. Didn't you hear Gladys just now? Warren! Warren! Uh, hey, hey, she's worried about me. I've got an idea. A bloody nose always gets him. Now hold still. <laughs> Warren! Oh, lover, what happened to you? I'm bleeding, I'm oh. bleeding. You had enough, Haggerty? Oh, you brute. How dare you hit him on his back turn? Oh! I'm bleeding! I'm bleeding! Oh, Could somebody mind telling me the meaning of it? Dad, I thought it'd be calm, be calm. I can explain everything, Mr. Allen. Well, then start explaining. Well, Dad, it was like Dad? This. Honey, you mean to tell me you married him? Yes, Father, I did, but you see, it's like this. Well, it's then like who he... is this woman? Oh, I'm Bill's wife. No. What? <laughs> you see, I Father, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to go So the curtain falls on easy to wed. But you meet our stars again as they take a curtain call. Van Johnson, Esther Williams, and Virginia Gray. You know, Van is a veteran here, but we welcome Esther for the first time. Thank you, Bill. It's been fun. And we hope this is just the first of many appearances here. You know, Esther, you and Van make a perfect team. <laughs> well, thank you, but, you know, we've had a little experience making pictures together. Yes, we've made swimming musicals, dancing musicals, and singing musicals. And the two of you have just finished The Duchess of Idaho for MGM. What's that one about? Completely different. This is a skiing musical. <laughs> well, <laughs> if Esther doesn't swim in it, I'm not going to go. Oh, well, you're very sweet, but, but I do that, too. But the next assignment I have is a dandy. We're going to make a picture in Honolulu. Oh, and it's so economical for the studio. Well, what do you mean, then? <laughs> well, naturally, she'll swim over. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son is going along. He's only six months old, so I think we'll take the lurley. Half a year old? Well, hmm? couldn't he swim halfway? Oh, no. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I do hope you'll be careful of that lovely Lux complexion in the Hawaiian sun. Thank you, Bill. Lux soap has always been my complexion care. I wouldn't think of going without it. Oh, and the same goes for me, Mr. Keeley. Oh, by the way, uh, what about next week's play? Next week, we present an exciting aviation drama. The story of a flyer whose personal life is as violent as the storms he encounters. It's Slattery's Hurricane from 20th Century Fox Studios. And the stars of this fast-moving adventure story are Maureen O'Hara, Richard Conte, and Veronica Lake. I know you'll enjoy it. Sounds wonderful, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night and thank you all. Here's a passion flash from Hollywood. It's a blouse. It's a slip. It's both in one and perfect for suits. Esther Williams has one of these new blouse slips in nylon. The blouse top has loads of tiny tucks and baby lace. The slip half ends in a deep ruffle. Of course... Esther insists on Lux Flakes' care for it, just as she does for her gorgeous silk and rayon lingerie. Wrong washing methods soon fade colors, often damage lace. Actual washing tests prove that Lux Flakes' care keeps lingerie enchantingly lovely three times as long. Be sure to get Lux Flakes tomorrow. Give all your nice washables that lovely Lux look. Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Maureen O'Hara, Richard Conte, and Veronica Lake in Slattery's Hurricane. 
This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Dan Johnson and Esther Williams appeared by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Nancy Goes to Rio, starring Ann Southern and Jane Powell. Heard in our cast tonight were Jim Backus as Haggerty, Bill Johnstone as Mr. Allenberry, and Eddie Marr as Spike. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Slattery's Hurricane with Maureen O'Hara, Richard Conti, and Veronica Lake.